What's up everybody? It is Christmas week. I am Jason C and welcome to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. Today we are reviewing a brand I've never tested and a brand that I've been getting a lot of questions about, Rabbit Hole. It's a lineup I always see on the shelf and they made some headlines this year with the release of their six year cast strength founders collection, Boxer Grill Rye. Now they have a unique story, cool bottle design and four unique and available core expressions that we will taste today to see which one you should chase down the rabbit hole today on the Mash and Drum. Rabbit Hole, which was acquired by Pernod last year, was founded by Iranian-born Kaveh Zemanian. While living in Chicago, Zemanian met his wife, Heather, a Louisville native who introduced him to bourbon. As he ventured into learning more about both, he went down what he says is a rabbit hole he may never have dared alone. Ultimately, he stepped away from a successful career as a clinical psychologist and psychoanalyst to start Rabbit Hole. Kaveh and his family moved to Kentucky, driven by the desire to put Rabbit Hole at the forefront of the American Spirits category. He entrenched himself in the work and study of bourbon in the pursuit of starting his own distillery and creating something unique and new. Now the best part and one of the big things, you know, I respect about Rabbit Hole is that, you know, he could have taken the easy route by sourcing some whiskey and putting his own name on it, but instead he produced his own recipes, marrying heritage techniques with unique and exclusive mash bills to create a portfolio of one-of-a-kind expressions he could call his own. So last year, just a few weeks after announcing its sale to Pernod Ricard, Rabbit Hole Distillery unveiled a new whiskey along with a complete rebranding of its core range. The change is intended to honor influential figures in Louisville and in the life of Rabbit Hole founder Kaveh Zemanian. Now a big part of the Rabbit Hole experience is also their state-of-the-art distillery, which is an immersive experience into what the brand is built on, transparency and modern innovation. Uh, it's located in New Lou, which is Louisville's hub of art, food, and culture, complete with the Overlook Lounge, their modern top floor bar, seeing the mass fermenters and modern Vendome stills. It's a super cool experience, and you can take in one of the best views of Louisville in town. All right, so today we're gonna taste all of the four core expressions, which as I mentioned, all had recent rebranding to honor influential figures in Louisville. So first we're gonna start with their latest release in the core range, which is right here, which is the High Gold. So Rabbit Hole's newest whiskey called High Gold is a high rye bourbon made with 70% corn, 25% malted rye, and 5% malted barley. This is aged for just under four years at 47.5% ABV. Now it's priced around 60 bucks and is named for Christian High Gold, a German who immigrated to Louisville in 1850. He was a stone cutter by trade and High Gold built a mansion in the Point neighborhood of the city, decorating it with patriotic carvings and epigrams, including a bust of President James Buchanan. All right, guys, so excited to dive into the Rabbit Hole core lineup. Again, it's a lineup that I haven't explored yet. I have had a taste of the PX Sherry one, which we will get into, but that was before the rebranding. Um, so I've been doing a lot of reviews of bourbons and whiskeys that are pretty hard to find lately. So it's good to take a step back and look at some stuff that's on the shelf, especially one that I've never um, you know, explored. Uh, but before we start, a good note is that all of their whiskeys are non-chill filtered, and they're all aged in toasted, then charred American oak barrels. So the great thing about Rabbit Hole is they're nothing if not transparent. All right, so let's dive into the high gold here. Mm, very bright vanillas. A lot of juicy fruit gum. So there is definitely a very, uh, a very bright juicy fruit gum note in here. I grew up with juicy fruit. My grandmother used to buy me uh, juicy fruit gum, the, the crazy packs that yellow bright packaging. Always just remember Juicy Fruit. There's a very light butterscotch note in here as well, it's, but it's, it's not deep, it's not rich. Again, this is a younger whiskey. You're not gonna have a, a lot of depth here, but it is very sweet and very pleasing on the nose so far. 
You can definitely smell a little bit of the youth on the nose. It definitely has a bourbon mash, like a fresh bourbon mash note to it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, as long as you just pull the sweet flavors out of that, which is what I'm getting in here. You do get some of the rye spice. There is some citrus there, a little bit of black pepper. All right, let's try the high gold. Here we go. <laughs> there is definitely some black pepper on here. A lot, I mean, you, you, they say high rye bourbon. The high rye definitely hits you right up front and on the back. In between, you get kind of that, that, sweet, that sweet note to it. Yeah, the juicy fruit gum, the little hint of butterscotch, the vanilla. The nose is pretty much lining up with the palate, except for that high spice that's in there. This definitely has a good high rye kick to it. Let's go for another sip. So on the second sip, a little bit more caramel. It's, you know, it's coming along through with the butterscotch note. You still get that nice lingering, um, you know, black pepper spice that's lingering on the front. And also the back of the palate, just kind of dancing on the back of the tongue there. I actually kind of like that one. It's not a blow you away, you know, bourbon and for any stretch of the imagination, but I think, you know, when you're saying high rye bourbon on the, on the label, you definitely taste it. Let's go for another sip. So being non-chill filtered, it's got a really good mouthfeel to it. It's kind of creamy, especially for a younger whiskey. Again, really punching through with those nice citrus spice. Just got like a little burst of apricot there too, to kind of go along with that pepper spice. It's very sweet, very spicy. It's got a good balance. I, I do like the juicy fruit note, <laughs> as you could tell. One last taste of this one, here we go. Again, juicy fruit gum, caramel, slight hit of butterscotch here. That sandwich between some really good spice here on the front and the back of the palate that lingers on. If you like a higher spicy bourbon, then I think this would probably be right in your wheelhouse. All right, we got the next one up, which is Rabbit Hole's Core 47.5% Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Uh, this retails for about 60 bucks. It's made with a four grain mash bill of 70% corn, 10% malted wheat, 10% malted barley and 10% honey malted barley, and it's named Cave Hill. Now the name comes from Louisville's historic Cave Hill Cemetery, which is the resting place of more distillers than anywhere else in the country. Now, again, like I mentioned, this is non chill filtered and aged in new toasted and charred American oak. All right, so now we have a four grain bourbon here. Let's see how it is. Let's go to the nose on this one. So immediately coming off the high gold, I'm definitely picking up that, that wheat, that wheat funk that sometimes you get in a bourbon, especially a young wheater. Way more apple on the nose here. This is apple, apple peel. Again, you get a little bit of that youthfulness to it that's there, but it's not overwhelming. This is all apple and orange. I mean, I'm getting a ton of orange zest in here too to go along with that apple. It's a really nice balance. There's a bright fruit characteristic in here, I think coming from the, from the malted wheat as well. There's some nice vanillas here. You definitely get the, a little bit of a honey characteristic here from that honey malted barley, but it's, it's kind of commingled with, uh, with some really nice bright fruit notes. Again, the apple, pear, orange really jumping out of this one. This actually reminds me a little bit of the Woodford Reserve weeded whiskey which is primarily wheat, but it is a four grain, but it also has these really bright, um, you know, like fruit flavors. All right, let's give it a try. Here we go. So this is very sweet and easy on the palate, not nearly as, as peppery and as, um, as rye spice forward as the high gold was. This one just comes through like with a lot of fruit, little bit of a tinge of pepper on the back end. There's a fresh, uh, there's a fresh like mintiness to it on the back end, like peppermint right on the very end as well. Go for another sip. Wow, but even when I'm like putting my nose to the glass, it's all just apple and pear and yeah, orange and like a ton of orange too. This is nice. It's kind of like a good holiday, a uh, good holiday bourbon. Kind of get some of those, uh, the apple and the orange and almost like fruitcake, get some baking spices in there. There's definitely a little, like a, the tiniest hint of cinnamon I'm picking up here. One last sip of this one. 
Mm. Again, really good mouthfeel, but you know, non-chill filtered. It's got a little bit of a hint of a finish here. Again, the apple, the pear, the orange. I'm not mad at that one. Again, it's not the most complex. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll save it for the end to see which my favorite is. But, you know, for a good easy sipper, this one's pretty damn good. All right, so next up is Rabbit Holes 47.5% ABV Kentucky Straight Rye. This retails for about 50 bucks. And it, the new name, which is called Boxer Grail, is named after Louisville's greatest athlete and one of the greatest athletes of all time, Boxer Muhammad Ali. So this is made with a 95% rye and a 5% malted barley. The rye is supposed to be bold, just as Muhammad Ali was. All right, so let's try the Boxer Grail. Here we go. Oh yeah, this is all rye on the nose. This is black tea, honey, a lot of citrus spice. Definitely that citrusy, orange, lemon quality to it. This is like black tea with like fresh lemon and orange in it, honestly. Again, it's on the youthful side, but rye kind of hides youth a little bit better than bourbon does. So you don't really smell the youth on the nose like you do with the bourbons, at least so far. Good black pepper spice on here. There is a fresh kind of fresh cut grass, minty, evergreen type of uh, profile going on the nose here, but not in a bad way. I kind of appreciate the mintiness. Getting like the slightest, slightest hint of like a, like a milk chocolate here too. I mean, for a 95.5 rye, it's about what you would expect on the nose. Let's give it a go. Here we go. Oh, so we have another easy sipper here. I'm not getting that burst of rye spice and black pepper that I think I want in a rye personally. That came off very soft, a little bit easier on the palate. Let's go for another sip. A little more rye spice on the second sip. Again, it's minty. It's a little bit earthy. That's all up front. Then in the back end here, that here comes the orange, the honey, the lemon, all that citrus. The black pepper on the back end as well. Good oak spice as well coming through. Yeah, again, like all of them, these so far the first three all have really nice creamy mouthfeels. They're not, you know, they, they kind of stick around on the palate. The flavors kind of linger, which I really like. Another sip here. This is about as solid as a rye as you get. It's, again, that 95.5 mash bill, it's, it's about what you would expect, like I said. It's honey, it's spicy. Not super spicy, but there is some spice there that lingers on. You get this peppermint, that little bit of hint of a chocolate, the black tea note, again with the honey and the lemon. It's a very, very solid rye. I could see any rye lover sipping on this or even using this for a cocktail. I have some thoughts about this one, but let's try the last one in the lineup before we run through uh, the overview of all four. Finally, we have the last one here, which is Rabbit Hole's 46.5% ABV, Pedro Jimenez Sherry Cask Finished Bourbon, which has been dubbed Derringer. Now, Derringer is made with 68% corn, 18% wheat, and 14% malted barley. So we have a PX Sherry Cask Finished Weeder, which should make it pretty fruity and sweet. We'll see. This retails for about 80 bucks, which makes it the most expensive in the core lineup. Now, the whiskey's name is a nod to Cave Zemanian's wife, Heather, who was the one that got him into drinking bourbon. All right, so really interested in trying this one again. Again, I think this was the only one I had uh, way back when, and this was a uh, before it was renamed Derringer. It was just their PX Sherry Bourbon, uh, which at the time I thought was pretty good. Definitely had some youth to it. Let's see if it's evolved at all. Let's go to the nose. This is all raisins. Let's get some more air in here. I'm literally smelling like the mustiness of the Sherry cask. All right, let's get some more air in there. Let's try it again. All right, that opened up a little bit more. Yeah, there's like a musty earthiness to it, I think, from the sherry cast that's coming through. But on top of that, there's some raisins in there. I don't know if it's like raisins or dates. There's, there's definitely like a dried fruit in there. This is probably more of the, so PX usually will influence uh, you know, flavors in a way that give you a little bit more nuttiness. And this is definitely bringing some like roasted almond or pecan, uh, you know, in the nose here, which is something I wasn't getting in the other offerings, which I, you know, definitely like. Little hint of raspberry here. 
again from that sherry cask. Yeah, the nuttiness and the and the almond and the um, again the fruit forward uh, like the raisin, the date, the dried fruits. It's all there, but it's overlaid by I think like that sherry cask like mustiness. Um, so let's give it a try and see what we get on the palate. Interesting. Here we go. Wow, I didn't get any of that mustiness on the palate. Just got all fruit. Very, very fruit forward. Again, that PX Sherry cast is gonna really influence the whiskey and the bourbon, really give you some fruit flavors. Another sip. Yeah, this is just more honey and almond and, and uh, pecan. Definitely the raspberry aspect. I'm really getting a nice raspberry note in here, which is really good. But again, the raisins and dates are coming now on the back end along with that sherry cast, like that mustiness and earthiness that it has. It tastes better than it smells, if that, <laughs> that gives you any indication. I do like the nose, but there's just a lot of like youth and mustiness coming out of the nose on the sherry cask, which I wasn't really getting on the other ones. I was getting the youth, but there was no mustiness there. So I would assume it's definitely coming from the sherry. Here we go. I think anyone who likes a finished bourbon, a finished whiskey, a sweeter whiskey. Remember, this is a weeded bourbon that already has a fruity profile. That's just being even amplified by the sherry cask here. One last sip on this one. Again, this is the lowest ABV of all four. Again, non-chill filtered. I do like the fruit forward aspect of this. But the sherry influence on this and, and what it kind of did to this bourbon isn't my favorite personally. I, you know, the nose, like I said, it has like a mustiness characteristic to it. I am picking it up on the palate a little bit on the back end. Maybe as it opens up, it'll go away a little bit, but the nose I'm not a fan of. The finish is okay. I do like the, 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 the palate up front and then mid palate, but the finish just isn't doing it for me with this one. All right, guys, so let's do the final breakdown of all four of these and kind of see where they fall, where they fell for me personally, and see what might be right for you uh, if you're looking to try anything from Rabbit Hole. I'm going to actually, the way I tried them is actually from the way I liked them from first, I guess, worst to first. So I'm going to start here on the back end. So the PX Sherry one for me, this is an $80 bottle. It's the lowest proof of all four of them. And while I could appreciate the fruit, the fruit aspect of it and the and the PX Sherry, which definitely can make the price a little bit higher because you are using a secondary cask. I don't. I would have to try a couple of more of these to see if the if that mustiness and that earthiness is kind of prevalent throughout all of the PX Sherry bottles that they have. But this one, it was really sticking out and just kind of an off note for me. So I wasn't really a fan of this. So for me, the eighty dollars for this one would be a pass. All right, so next up was the rye, which I d really did enjoy. I think the tricky thing with the rye is, is a, it's a $50 price point. Again, it's a 95.5 rye. Uh, it's, it's primarily rye, which probably makes it a little bit more expensive. Probably one of the better affordable 95.5 ryes on the market, but it's just there's so many ryes on the market today. You have uh, you know, cheaper ryes like Old Forester, which is an amazing rye, but definitely a different mash bill than this. Um, you have Pikesville rye, which is about $50 which is still probably one of my all-time favorite ryes that are available on the shelf uh, in Pikesville, which is definitely sweeter, a little bit more rounded in flavor than this is. You also have Knob Creek rye, you have Michter's rye, which is a big spread in a category. So this, I think, would kind of get lost in the shuffle of that category of, of, uh, of rye whiskeys. I mean, if you're looking for a 95.5 rye that's affordable, want to get this to go, I don't think you'll be disappointed in this. I just think the price point is a little bit high for what you're getting. Now these, these top two is where I, what I really liked here from Rabbit Hole. I think the Cave Hill is a just a really delicious solid bourbon. I like the proof on it. I love the fruit flavor on it. It had a really great mouthfeel, but I think there's some really nice weeded bourbon notes in here to be had. So my favorite of the bunch was the High Gold. Why? Because I love the sweet and I love the spice. I love high rye bourbons. I love drinking MGP. I love drinking stuff that's high rye. Uh, so this really brought it in uh, the flavor profile. Again, non-chill filtered. Remember, it's a, it's a youthful whiskey. It's not super old. It's not gonna be the most complex thing that you've ever tasted. But again, it's 60 bucks. Look, it, it's, it depends on what you wanna spend. If you're looking to try anything from Rabbit Hole, I think the High Gold or the Cave Hill 
are gonna be the ones depending on what you like. Like I said, if you like the smoother weeded bourbons, a little bit more fruit, go for the Cave Hill. If you want something with a little bit more of a spice kick to it, a little bit more of a sweet of spicy and sweet, go for the High Gold. But all in all, really impressive lineup. Uh, I definitely would like to see this stuff get older as we go along. I think right now, overall, the prices of these, it's what's gonna hold people back because there's so many great whiskeys on the shelf already, you know, from a 20 to 35 to $40 price point. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this review as we try the entire Rabbit Hole Core lineup. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had these, what you think, what your favorite is, are you not a fan? Uh, have you tried the high goal with the Cave Hill like I just did? And let me know what you think. Did you get that mustiness out of the PX Sherry that I did? Do you like the rye? Love talking to you guys. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share with. So cheers, and I'll see you next time on the Mash and Drum.